Yo, I've been playing in the 2K League Combine. Take a look, y'all. I'm not scoring too many points, and I've been playing the majority of the games with the pure rim protector, which, pause, can we just reflect for a second? The pure rim protector is so much fun to play with. All these slashers are just clogging up the paint thinking that they can dunk on you, and just being able to swat them. I'm probably leading the shit in good shot defenses, man. I don't know what to tell you. It's been so damn refreshing to be able to switch around and use any type of archetype without badge grinding for like two weeks or spending $50 on VC so you can upgrade your guy to an 85 overall or sitting through the mind-numbing cutscenes 24-7. Yo, just being able to play with archetypes that are different. Oh, oh, feels good, man, it does. So the 2K League Combine is interesting. They almost have to, I've seen time and time again, the manager saying, find ways to adjust. So it's like they throw you in a situation which in which some people are gonna be disadvantaged and they just say, find a way to adjust, the best players do. But for most people, it's fine. They'll find ways to adjust and probably still dominate. But specific to the sharpshooters, I played with the stretch for a bunch of games and my pure sharpshooter for a bunch of games in the Combine. When I tell you it's a nightmare, it's a nightmare. Imagine the point guard reluctantly passes you the ball and you miss your shot on an all-white release. He doesn't give you the ball all game unless you're wide open. Even when you come off off ball screen, you're good, he misses you. You're so reliant on other players as a pure sharpshooter that sometimes it just feels like you're not doing anything on the court. Offensively, if you don't get the ball, and on defense, they have slashers on the other team just running right straight through you with all kinds of blow-by animation. Here's what I think should have happened. All they really had to do was stop people from using glitched animations and also nerf blow -bys. That's all it really took. Instead, we have to use the 2K creative players, which, okay, they're throwing people out their comfort zone, all right. You're also playing with randoms, so how are you gonna adjust, play with guys that you don't think are as good as you? Are you a team leader? We'll see. And honestly, I didn't think I was gonna have fun playing the combine, but I'm having fun playing the combine. I'm playing with randoms, yo! I never thought I'd see the day where I play with a random, and I'm actually enjoying it. Sometimes you run across the PG who refuses to pass the ball under any sort of circumstance, and it'll happen, right? By the way, can we just appreciate this specific dribble move right here? This is so phenomenal for shooters. Shout out to Stephen Curry's animation. It is so blessed. Here's the thing with sharpshooters. Now, some of you guys may not know all the technicalities with jump shots. I have a whole video with all my jump shot videos if you guys wanna go through them. I'ma bless y'all though. In case you missed the video, base eight with the Kevin Durant release is one of the quickest jump shots in the game and it's straight up money, but it only works in low latency. So if you have high latency games, then it's not gonna work for you. Don't say agent never helped you, okay? I still use that. That's the primary jump shot I use on my sharpshooter. All right, but take this in. In any game where you're trying to find out who the best people are, what you really wanna do is increase the skills gap. And you would think by 2K making it harder to shoot, the sliders and make it more challenging, on top of the fact that you can only choose from numbered jump shots. You can't choose James Harden, Curry. You can't have any sort of custom jump shot. You would think that because it's harder, the best players would shine. But here's the thing, what you do in that situation is you make it very challenging for everybody to shoot consistent greens. Now, I can look at a player and if he can shoot 20 straight greens in the Pro-Am wide open, then I know he's nice. He could time his jump shot. If you mess up and you shoot like 13 for 20, you might be an average shooter. And I'm talking about from limitless range. You should be able to shoot from here with a pure sharpshooter and bang that consistently. But what 2K has done is they made it super hard to shoot, which means that even the best of the best sharpshooters are only shooting 60%. For example, if I step back, I release the ball, it's all, it's pretend that's all white. Instead of getting the green that I just got, I would have had like a 60% chance of making the shot. And any time you reduce certainty and add randomness, it reduces the overall skills gap of the game. So you have shooters that would previously shoot like 80%, if you left them open, maybe 90%, because they're great shooters, and now they're shooting like 50%, 60%, like everybody else. It would be a different story if we could use our own jump shots, right? Now we have to adjust and find a new jump shot in the span of like two weeks that can dominate the game in a small time window, which is very challenging to do, while also keeping up your stats and statistics because at the end of the game, the algorithm is gonna decide who makes it through, right? So that puts sharpshooters in a very tough position who have never practiced generic numbered releases that are really good at the game. So a lot of people using base eight, nine, 11, uh, 25, and a bunch of other random ones, but those are probably the most popular. And amateur one, I forgot about that. So I'm looking at NBA 2K Lab right now. Now, I, I can't show all of this because it's protected by copyright, but I'll give one example. For example, amateur one is one of the bases you can use in the NBA 2K League Combine. It gives you all the stats for the jump shots, and it tells you that there's a 32 millisecond green window. So you have a, a window of 32 seconds to get a green light, and if you can release it in that window, you get the green light. So what 2K effectively did was they made that green window a lot smaller and harder to hit in the Combine. On top of the fact that you can't use proper jump shots, it 
makes it super challenging to score. Now, take this in. There's some jump shots that are phenomenal in high latency situations, but are impossible to green in low latency situations. There are specific jump shots I literally had to stream so I could add latency to my game so that I can properly hit the greens consistently. The way this shooting is, is it doesn't really matter how well your timing is as much as it matters how well your jump shot is in combination with your timing. And they took away one part of the equation which makes it absolute misery to shoot with the sharpshooter. And as a sharpshooter, there's no worse feeling than being left open, shooting the ball, it gets all white, and then your teammates are looking at you like you, sh you shot us out the game. You missed the clutch shot or you should have made that. So there's so much pressure on the sharpshooter to succeed and instead of adding certainty, they've added randomness and it makes it frustrating to play. In my opinion, the sharpshooter is also the most boring archetype. It's part of the reason why I stopped playing with it. A lot of the time you're just standing still and unless somebody's setting off ball screens for you, you're not really doing much. On top of the fact that on defense, the blow by animations that get you get hit with are <laughs> insane and frustrating to deal with even for the best defender. But as we said, as a manager said, you have to find a way to adjust. So through all of this, if you're still a sharpshooter, you have a point guard that's willing to pass you the ball and you found a proper jump shot that you can time properly, then you won. But I haven't found anyone who's been able to do that. In the comments, can you guys let me know what types of jump shots you guys have been using? I've tried out five different jump shots so far that I really trusted that hit for me pretty much all the time. I use them as bases. I never use them standalone though. The thing about jump shots is sometimes a base can be really good, but it needs to be paired with a good release one, release two to make it money and vice versa. So without being able to make those combinations, I can't ever adjust for latency. So if one day the servers are amazing, low latency, next day they're bad and it's high latency, there's no way for me to adjust anymore. So in 2017, I used to complain all the time about latency like Yo, it's so OD, it changes game by game and there's no way to adjust for it. In 2K18, I just found ways to do it. I literally have an off-stream low latency jump shot. I have an off-stream high latency jump shot. I have an on-stream low latency jump shot and an on-stream high latency jump shot. I have four primary jump shots depending on how the servers are doing that day. So I literally hop on. I play my first game of Pro-Am and then I decide based on the latency how I project it's gonna be for the rest of the night and I choose one of my four jump shots. That's how I've been doing Pro-Am. The thing about the number of jump shots for me is the number of base 11, base nine, base eight are all very quick and great jump shots, but they only work in low latency situations unless I pair it with a release one and a release two. And I'm gonna drop a banger here for y'all that watched this point of the video, Kyrie. <laughs> If you ever have high latency situations, pair a base that you love with Kyrie as a release one and release two, and it will begin to hit in high latency situations. So with small details like that, that make me adjusting and dominating shooting with my slasher. Now I'm playing with my play shooter now, but with my slasher, I can literally pull up from here, from Limitless Range, I got, I got Silver Limitless, and bang consistently. See, these are all whites that I get all the time on the combine. The managers keep saying adjust, and if I was a player going for the 2K League, I'd be so worried because it seems like they've limited all the ways in which I would usually adjust. When you play a game like Call of Duty, let's say I'm playing Call of Duty, I see a guy, I flinch, react, I aim, I shoot. Now, regardless of the situation, unless you're playing like on a one or a two bar, you're straight. If your connection is good, you're gonna hit the guy and you're gonna get a hit mark. On 2K, I'll do dribble moves, okay? Let's say I'm a pure sharpshooter, I do a hippity hop, I pull up from Limitless, all white, right? Uh, I have to start praying, making sure, I just pray that my jump shot goes in, because there's no certainty, is a percentage. So I get a 60% chance, a 70% chance, or a 50% chance, depending on your attributes, how open you are, your release, etc. This video was not me complaining, it's just me speaking out loud about the struggle sharpshooters are gonna face and the limitations they have in being able to overcome those specific struggles. And I feel for the sharpshooters, man. The sharpshooter is a very vital position, and over the course of 2K, it seems like less and less people are willing to be sharpshooters. Everybody wants to be something else, like athletic rebounders are shining with insane stats. There's point guards dropping like 15 points, 15 assists, and as a sharpshooter, you just gotta hope and pray you got a good point guard, and then the all whites that you're inevitably gonna shoot because you can't consistently hit greens, and who knows, someone might find a way but nobody's found a way yet that anybody knows about. It just seems that sharpshooters are doomed and I'm I'm so I'm so focused. I want to figure this situation out. Like I like these challenges partly because like there's no real stake in it for me. Even if it doesn't work out, I didn't want to be a player anyway. So I'm good. But I'm going to play with the sharpshooter in the next 
few 2K League time slots. And I'm gonna see if I can figure out a jump shot or a situation where I can consistently hit. The thing about it for me is like, I'm agent zero. When I hop in games, almost every single game, someone on the other team messages me or someone on my team hops on mic and they're like, yo, was that agent zero? And they just expect me to hit my shots because I'm the guy with the jump shots. In some of these games I hop in, I'll shoot like 55% and I'll miss some open ones because it's all white. And the team will just look at me like, yo, that's not agent zero. I don't know what to tell them, bro. I don't know what to tell them, bro. I'm shooting all whites. It's the best I can do, literally. I'm gonna figure this out. I promise you, I'm gonna figure out a way to dominate as a sharpshooter. Now, it's also frustrating because there's usually you're going up against slashers a lot of the time, and it's very difficult to stop them from getting the blow by animations. And sometimes you can get hit with so many defensive breakdowns that I have to be careful as a sharpshooter. My teammate grade is not always gonna be high because I'm not getting those assists, I'm not setting screens, I'm not doing the usual stuff that would grant you a really good teammate grade. But sharpshooters are necessary, and I wish there was a way that made timing more of the focus. See, you see that little slither of space? An average shooter would shoot the ball like the way I just shot it there. But I would expect more from the best shooters, and I'm hoping that they find a way to, to slither those guys out. I, I know some of you guys are very bearish. I'm bullish, I'm excited for the league for plenty of reasons. Like you guys know I'm a competitive guy in any game I play. Like I just recently started playing Fortnite a couple weeks ago and I'm already starting to get competitive. I'm starting to get decent games in, I'm getting better. That's just the guy I am. I watch a lot of esports, so I'm hoping this league succeeds, as do I think most of you. But I think the first part of getting the league to succeed is getting the right people in there. And I'm hoping that whatever algorithm is determining who makes it has a soft spot in their heart for the sharpshooters that are gonna be dealing with all these struggles I mentioned. There's probably a bunch of guys who are sharpshooters that aren't playing with this build because of the reasons I've mentioned. There are some stuff I really like, like the fact that if you're a rebounding primary, you're skying high for the rebounds, getting it over everybody. Like I have a 6'10 slasher on Pro-Am and I get a lot of rebounds and it's weird, I shouldn't be getting some of them over big men, but it seems like some of the slider adjustments make it more fun to play and make it so that the archetypes really matter. So anyway, I don't. this wasn't a rant, I was just speaking out loud about my experience playing. I don't think any changes are gonna happen because like the thing already started, so I'm assuming they're just gonna roll with what they have. But yeah, I'm gonna switch to a sharpshooter. I've been having fun playing the combine, so I'm gonna continue playing it. <laughs> Yo, I dead was playing through the Super Bowl. I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. I had the Super Bowl open on this monitor and I was playing right here on this monitor. And my dribble game has gotten decent, y'all. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I've been getting better at dribbling. Now, I can't really do this in comp games because they, they poke the ball loose. Aiden's <laughs> like, hey, not a dribbler and they'd be super aggressive when they're guarding me. But when I'm playing here, you know, there's nobody to guard me. I'm out here just, you know, dribbling away. Boom. Woo, Agent. You got all that, Agent? Hold on, Agent. What you got, bro? Anyway, uh, I just felt like I had to make this video. If you guys enjoy it, make sure to drop a like, subscribe. If you guys are new, I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one. I have some pretty exciting stuff coming up soon I'm gonna announce, so be on the lookout. And I'm out. Peace.